Hey, how's it going guys? Today I'm just going to go over a quick overview on the Balance Tree Talents in The War Within. Now these won't be the Hero Talents, so we'll go over Hero Talents later when they're more relevant. But for right now, we're just going to go over the Talents that you're going to want to run on Boomy. Um, let's take a look at the Druid Tree. So first of all, Rake and Feline Swiftness. Obvious pickup. Movement speed increased by 15%. Definitely going to want that. Uh, Sunfire, a Wii Sunfire, Nurturing Instinct. Definitely going to want all those. Frigid Regen, Improved Bark Skin, Vernon Heart, want all those for sure. Um, now, we need Mass Entanglement to get Cyclone now. Stamping Roar, yep, very obvious. Very, very good talents right here. Uh, Soothe, we can we can skip now, which is really great, so we're not playing Soothe anymore. Uh, this this talent is basically useless. Uh, you, could, you could argue that this is useful into Warriors, but honestly, like, who's pressing this ability? Come on. Uh, next is... Iron Fur, gonna want to run that. Thick Hide, yep. Wild Charge, yep. Uh, now we need to get to Bash and like Well Honed Instincts. So we're gonna go Matted Fur. Um, and then we actually need to pick up some other stuff. So Astro Influence, this has changed. So Astro Influence works great. The only thing it doesn't work on now is like Feral and Bear Form abilities. That is, includes Bash. So if I'm Astro Influence, um, I have to bash from here now. I can't be like right here and bash somebody. I have to be all the way close up to here to bash a target. So Astro Influence now does not affect like barrel and bear abilities. And I'm not sure if you can auto attack through like pretty big pillars anymore now. So this a little bit unfortunate, but it's how it is right now. Maybe it's a bug. Hopefully it's a bug, but possibly not a bug. Starlight Conduit, just more damage. Renewal. Rising Light, just more damage. Typhoon. Lore of the Grove, just more damage. Uh, Innervate, yep. Now, Lakara's Teachings, only two points. Gonna pick those up. Uh, new talent is Fluid Form. Now, I, I just recorded this, and I went through like a 20-minute explanation of why you wouldn't run this. And after I explained it, basically to myself or to you guys for 20 minutes, I realized that this talent actually might be okay. So I don't know if this talent is good or not yet. Uh, so question mark on this one right here. Uh, next, we're going to go Instincts of the Claw. So we can get Mighty Bash and well Honed Instincts. Um, now we have more, one more talent to spend. We have Feline Swiftness now, so we don't have to play Improved Stamping Roar. It might be not that worth it. We could play Oak Skin now. Um... I think I'm going to play Improved Stamping Roar anyways. You could play Oak Skin, doesn't really matter. I feel like Bark Skin is already so powerful and you're not going to die through it with uh, Verdant Heart. So I'm not going to really play into Oak Skin. I'm just going to say, hey, let's just take no damage. So I'm going to play Improved Stamping Roar. Now there could be play for Fluid Form, but if you're going to pick up Fluid Form, it could just be a dropping this for this or dropping like Innervate for it. Like, Something to drop to play Fluid Form would have to be pretty important. You have to drop something that's actually a really good talent. The Fluid Form, not sure if it's great yet, but if you do want to play it, you're going to have to drop something that's pretty good. Get it. Now let's take a look at, um, actually one more thing, a Decurse, easier to get, just one, two, and you can get it pretty easily. Only two talent points. I think it was three before. Um... Now let's take a look at the boomy side. So Eclipse makes Wrath do 90% increased damage. I'm pretty sure that's more than it was before. Um, so Eclipse, shooting stars, yep, normal, solar beam, yep. Solstice, whenever you enter Eclipse, you get Asha power from your dots. Um, Light of the Sun, I love that talent. Uh, Twin Moons, Warrior Balloon, Wild Surges, kind of all the same. Nature's Balance, I really don't think it's that great of a talent. It like feels good in the opener, but it's actually pretty pretty bad overall. And Worry Balloon is much better compared to it. Same with Light of the Sun. I think they're both much, much better talents. Uh, next we have Slash Alignment. 15 seconds now. It's not 20 seconds. Um, Umbral Intensity. This is unnerfed in PvP. So you're straight up just going to hit 50% harder with your Wraths and Starfires. Um... And you'll see that some of this casted damage, you'll see some crazy casted damage with these talents. 
This is basically compensating for us losing our two set. And we're going to lose our two set as soon as we level up and go into the next expansion. Um, but for right now, we still have our two set. So we can basically one shot people with Wraths and Starfires. Um, but going into the next expansion, we'll, we'll lose that. Um, so Nature's Grace, this is our two set from either season one or two, I believe. Um, so this allows us to enter Eclipse easy. And also, it makes our casted abilities when we enter Eclipse do increased damage. And when we press Incarn, we also get two increased damage casts. So this is really nice for Burst and for entering Eclipse. Really great talent. I'm super happy they added this. It's just amazing. Um, next, Touch of the Cosmos. Uh, this talent, I honestly don't even think it's that good. I, You could cast like 30 Wraths and then get four Touch of the Cosmos procs or something like that. And I just don't think that's that worth it. Four extra Star Surges won't really matter that much. And there's much better talents to play over Touch of the Cosmos. So one of those talents is Ashel Smolder, which is now reworked. It's just a straight 40% chance um, to put the dot up now. Winning Twilight only one point, and it's 6%, so it's more value per point to play Winning Twilight now, so we're going to pick that. Stellar Amplification, this is a new talent. Basically, if you Star Surge a target, that target's going to take 20% more damage from your dots for 5 seconds. That's it. Your Star Surge just makes a target take more damage from dots. Still the forest, same as before, just more AP when you Wrath. Um, now we have a new talent called Greater Alignment. There is maybe play for this in PvE, but I don't think you're actually going to play this in PvP. I think Orbital Strike is still just better. Greater Alignment just... It might do more damage on paper, but how PvP works and how people press defensive cooldowns... Um, I just don't think Greater Alignment is that insane. So I'm just going to pick up Orbital Strike here. Star-Lord definitely still good. Umbral Embrace is unnerfed in PvP and makes it do... Makes your next cast do 75% additional damage. This is where the one-shot comes in. Um, cosmic Rapidity, just more dot damage. Now, Orbit Breaker and Sundered Firmament now share the same talent node. So both kind of, like, all, like they're not really that insane. Both these talents aren't really that crazy in PvP. Um, Mushrooms over here still. Next we have our Season 2 or 3. Four set, which is not that great. I don't think we're really ever going to want to run this talent. Um, you'll see some of these other talents are really good. This talent is like okay, but you'll see that other talents are just so much better. Next we have Denizen of the Dream. This is just the Denizen of the Dream. It doesn't add Friend of the Fae. And you only play Dragon before because of Friend of the Fae. So we won't be playing this anymore. Next we have Bounce of All Things. Probably the best talent we have out of all of our talents right now. Um, this is unnerfed in PvP, so you can get 40% crit on your Incarn. That's why we play Orbital Strike, to get more frequent Incarns and more frequent like Bursts. So, Balance of All Things is crazy right now for Burst. Absolutely insane. They will probably nerf this uh, halfway through Season 1 or something like that. Or before, if they watch this video. Because this is completely broken. Um... Umbral Inspiration, basically when you consume an Umbral Embrace proc, you increase the damage of Moonfire, Sunfire, Stellar Flare, Shooting Stars, and Starfall by 30% for 6 seconds on all targets. Um, I'm pretty sure it's on all targets. So we're going to want to pick that one up, that's really good. Power Goldrin, still nerfed in PvP, not going to want to play that. Rattle the Stars, still good. Star Weaver still exists, but I don't think we're going to play it anymore. Um... So Rattle Stars, Fury of Loon, Radiant Moonlight, just good bursts, good AP. Maybe we don't play these sometimes, I don't know. Like, there's some other talents, like, I could, you could almost argue, like, I'm theorycrafting this on the spot, you could almost argue you could drop this for, like, Wild Mushroom, and Wild Mushroom could just be better. Now, poss possibly, possibly. Because, like, think about it. Like, you get Fury of Loon, but what if you just hit, like, two targets with a Wild Mushroom? That would do, like, all your Fury of Loon damage. Um, so, yeah. Could be a potential thing I try out today. We'll see. But Fury of Loon, just going for the standard stuff right here. Uh, Incarn. So, you're only going to have 20 seconds of Incarn, not 30. 
Again, why Bounce of All Things is really good, and the short Incarnate is much better with Orbital Strike. Um, so, Incarnation. Now, Astral Communion got changed. So, increases maximum AP by 20, still the same. But now, entering Eclipse grants 20 additional Astral Power. So, this is like, this is really nice. This is just much more AP all the time. And this, this talent alone basically makes Nature's Balance obsolete. So as soon as you enter Eclipse, you're just like, you got the AP anyways. Um, you have all your dots on all the targets. You press your Incarn, you're going to get your Astral Communion AP. You're going to get your Solstice AP from all your Shooting Stars falling on all your dotted targets during a double Eclipse. So like, you really won't need this. And also in Loon's Guidance, 30% 30, 30 less value because Incarn is like 33% uh, less duration. Um, so Illumin's Guidance just doesn't make a lot of sense. You get so much Astral Power now from Astral Communion that Illumin's Guidance just, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to play. Um, same with like Touch the Cosmos, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to play so much Astral Power. You might as well just make the things you do cast hit much harder with some of these other talents. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the basic talents here. This is for single target. Now we'll look at AoE super fast here. Um, Fluid form, like I can show that really quick. Let me just show you fluid form. I'll show you the fluid form combo. Super fast here. So fluid form, if you hit rake, it puts you cat form. If you hit wrath, it puts you boomy form. And if you hit mangle, it puts you bear form. So you can kind of like alternate if you want. You could do some like random stuff, but you have to keep in mind that you don't have astral influence. So if I step back a little bit, I can't rake that target. I can't. I can't go bear form. It's if you still had the original astral influence, maybe you would play fluid form. But since astral influence isn't really working right now for melee abilities, uh, fluid form just like loses a lot of value just because of that. So the the one positive of it, or one one of the good things of it is, yes, you can like enter you can enter forms a little bit better. You can save a couple globals. Um, but, uh, yeah, but, but the thing is, if you want to play it, you have to drop another really good talent down below here. And I'll show you one thing that is good about it. Because I actually don't know if you want to play it or not. So I will show you one thing that is good. So you could, like, double dot. I'm going to do my go without bash. So, like, I'm going to throw bash away. Like, bash is over here. Boom. No more bash. I'm going to do my go without bash. So I'm going to, like, Fury Balloon, Beam, Incarn, Meld, Rake, Wrath, Surge, Surge, Surge. And that like 100 does somebody. So like, I can Meld, Rake, be in cat form, and then just start casting a Wrath Surge. And that'll put me in boomy form, maximum damage. So you can kind of like, play super aggressive with this in some ways. And maybe you can kite with it in some ways I haven't discovered yet. So I'm not sure on this talent yet. Uh, but these other ones I'm pretty confident on. Um, so that is fluid form. Let me go over some of the other talents here for AoE. Let me exit combat real quick. We'll go over the AoE build for like, because a lot of you are probably wanting the AoE build for like solo battlegrounds, and I've played a few of those. Um, so let me just exit combat real quick, and we will change over to the AoE build. It should be should be pretty quick here. Yeah. Make sure to buy the Epic Edition of uh, War Within so you can play three days early. Surely you'll play 30, three days early. As I as I exit combat, I'll, I'll uh, you know, unsponsored plug for the new expansion. As I as I exit combat for the two year old expansion. Hold on, give me a, give me. Oh, there we go, there we go. All right, so we've exited combat. Um, and let's make sure we don't die here. Okay, a little one v one here. Okay, all right, so let's take a look at the AoE build. So these are really the only two builds I would consider playing right now. You could play some other stuff, but not really that insane. And we'll go over PvP talents right after this too. So I have to wait for Warrior of a Loon actually. Um, let's go over the PvP talents right now then. So Mukunora did get nerfed during Dragonflight. So anybody who hasn't played Boomy for a little while, it got nerfed by 50%. So you can only get up to 6% crit strike. So Munkinora, not as good as it was before. 
maybe you don't play it now because there's some much there's some really good talents you can pick up. Um, so Tireless Pursuit used to be a talent in the Druid Tree, and now it's just a PvP talent, so that might be pretty good. Uh, Master Shapeshifter still bad. More in Swiftness still bad. High Winds reworked. Um, increases the range of Cyclone, Typhoon, and Entangling Roots by five yards. So this is a talent that might be worth it to pick up a lot of the time. So high winds, pretty insane. Protect the Grove, still the same. Starburst, still the same. Fury Swarm, still the same. Deep Roots, still the same. Dying Star, still the same. All these, still the same. So the talents we're really going to be wanting to look at is Alcan Adapt, Mukanora, Tireless Pursuit, High Winds, Thorns, Protect of the Grove, maybe Starburst, Fury Swarm, maybe sometimes Deep Roots, sometimes Moon and Stars. Those are the talents we're going to want to look at. I guess a lot of them, but... Um, our main build is probably going to be this, like Mukinor, Alcan Adept, High Winds. That's going to be our main build. And there might be times where we actually don't play Mukinora because of the nerf to it. It's not really that insane. And if you were to play with like a Warrior or a Windwalker or an Outlaw Rogue on your team, they're not going to benefit from the spell crit. So Mukinora might be on its way out. We'll see. Um, so yeah, that's PvP talents. Look at AoE super fast here. Now AoE, um, and also for the single target, for that, that stuff before, it's all just same damage rotation as before. Same thing. Um, yeah, so AoE, I am playing no stellar amplification because this is just single target. It only counts when you star search. I'm playing Rattle of Stars for AoE instead of Star Weaver because we don't have Arcanic Pulsar anymore. I'm playing Orbit Breaker because Orbit Breaker is just going to proc a lot when you're AoEing, especially in like BGs, RBGs, solo RBGs. Um, Wild Mushroom, I'm playing this as well. Wild Mushroom is actually more AoE than than uh, Fury Valoon, and I'm kind I'm starting to consider putting Wild Mushroom instead of Fury Valoon in some of my builds. Um, there is a play where you could maybe play Greater Alignment, and you could play Harmony of the Heavens over Orbit Breaker, that is potentially a play you can make. Because this gets more value, and this gets more value in RBGs where you were not going to get CC'd as much. So, potential, but I'm going to assume I'm going to get CC'd the entire time. And, yeah, I'm, I'm going to assume that I want to do highest damage all the time, and I might get CC'd, I might not, but I'm not going to get punished as hard for being CC'd. Um... And then we're not playing Warrior Balloon, we're not playing Nature's Balance, not playing Light of the Sun. We're just putting all those into Starfall, all those into these talents. Um, and as you can see over here, I'm playing a little bit of a different talent build. So I'm not playing Innervate. I'm not playing Stamping Roar or Fluid Form. Uh, what else am I not playing? I'm not playing Rake or Tireless or uh, Feline Swiftness. Instead, I'm playing Killer Instinct. So Armor Increased by 6%. I'm playing Natural Recovery, 4% Increased Healing Received. I'm playing Oak Skin, so I'm more tanky. So basically, when you play AoE, for Starfall to do damage, you have to be in line of sight of people. So people can, and if you want to be in line of sight of everybody, you got to be kind of like in the open and the center of the map, which means you're going to become a kill target. So over here, we're playing more defensive stuff, but we're not playing Ursine Vigor and we're not playing Ursarch's Spirit because we don't want to be going Bear Form if we don't have to. Going bear form is just a damage loss. So we might as well take less damage, receive more heals, take even less damage on, on our bark skin. Um, so that way we're not going bear form and we're just doing damage. Um, so yeah, this is the AoE build. I will demonstrate this AoE build in action. Um, the single target damage rotation, you'll find in any like any video, it's all the same. Single target is just enter Eclipse. Don't overcap on Astro Power. Keep your dots up. And yeah, that's basically it. And just stay in Solar Eclipse. Stay in Solar Eclipse for a single target. And that's basically it. AoE is a little bit different. Um, Aetherial Kindling, I think, got nerfed by one second. I think he used to get four seconds. Um, so that's, that's going to suck a little bit when our stats get squished and if we get less haste in Season 1 of The War Within. But still a great talent. This is like the core of our damage, Aetherial Kindling. Basically, once you have dots on targets, you don't need to keep reapplying dots. You just need to keep 
generating as much astral power as possible to keep putting starfalls out and that will keep your dots up because this just extends them so if i were to like put some dots up here on these dummies maybe hit a double starfire i can hit a starfall and it will extend them so starfall extends starfall extends so that's how we're going to want to do this we're going to want to dot like maybe like 80 percent of the targets because if we dot everything our dots are just going to fall off um, before we can start generating our real ash power and maintaining our dots. So we get a couple dots out. We're not going to be able to dot everything, but just a couple dots. Then we're going to starfall with our incarn, starfall, starfall, throw a mushroom, starfall, big starfire, big starfire, a couple more starfires because they're stacked up. Um, now if they aren't stacked up, I'm going to cast wraths over here because that's going to generate more ash power with Soul the Forest. So we're going to cast Wraths over here to generate more Ash Power. We're going to enter Solar Eclipse so we can keep generating more Ash Power with our, with our Wraths. Because Wrath will generate more AP than your Starfire if they're not stacked up. And all we want to do is maximize our AP regeneration so that we can keep our dots on these targets. These are starting to fall off, but these ones, actually they're not doing too bad. These ones are almost full duration. Just these ones are starting to fall off, but we can maybe recover them. We can keep them up this way. So, wrathing. And I'm not like keeping my dots up. I'm just I'm just wrathing and starfalling and entering my solar eclipse. That's all I'm doing. Wrath, starfire, enter solar eclipse. And my dots are going to stay on all my targets here. So that's the AoE rotation. Single target is, I can just demonstrate the single target real quick. Same thing, we're just doing Star Surge. Same exact thing. And if you have Fear of a Loon, you'll just send that off cooldown, and it's just this. Just Wraths and Surges, don't overcap on AP. And when your dots are almost over, you just refresh them real quick. Basically it. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. Stats real quick, we're just doing Haste. We're, doing a, we're going Haste over Mastery over Verse. Um, or like maybe mastery equals verse. You want about the same amount. I have slightly more mastery than verse. And each point of mastery is as valuable, is actually more valuable than a point of intellect. So mastery is actually insane for your damage. Um, so play a little bit of that if you want more damage. If you just go heavy verse, heavy haste, zero mastery, you're not going to do that much damage. It's, it's not going to be that insane. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.